Good morning. I'm Lee Jamison, and this is the 89th installment of the Bible in a Year. Today's readings will be from Judges, chapters 9 and 10, and from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, uh, verses 20 through 35. Abimelech's Conspiracy Now Abimelech, the son of Jerubel, went to Shechem, to his mother's relatives, and said to them, and to the whole clan of his mother's family, Say in the ears of all the elders of Shechem, Which is better for you, that all seventy of the sons of Jerubel rule over you, or that one rule over you? Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's relatives spoke all these words on his behalf in the ears of all the leaders of Shechem, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. And they gave him seventy pieces of silver out of the house of baal Berith, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless fellows who followed him. And he went to his father's house at Oprah, and killed his brothers, the sons of Jerubel, seventy men on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubel, was left, for he hid himself. And all the leaders of Shechem came together, and all Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king by the oak of the pillar at Shechem. When it was told to Jotham, he went and stood on top of Mount Gerizim and cried aloud and said to them, Listen to me, you leaders of Shechem that God may listen to you. The trees once went out to anoint a king over them, and they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Shall I leave my abundance, by which gods and men are honored, and go to hold sway over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree said, Shall I leave my sweetness and my good fruit, and go hold sway over the trees? And the trees said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I leave my wine that cheers God and men, and go hold sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointed me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now, therefore, if you acted in good faith and integrity when you made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Jerubel and his house and have done to him as his deeds deserve, for my father fought for you and risked his life and delivered you from the hands of Midian, and you have risen up against my father's house this day, and have killed his son, seventy men on one stone, and have made Abimelech the son of his female servant, king over the leaders of Shechem, because he is your relative. If you then have acted in good faith and integrity with Jerubel and with his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech, and devour the leaders of Shechem and Beth Milo, and let fire come out from the leaders of Shechem and from Beth Milo, and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away, and fled, and went to Beir, and lived there because of Abimelech, his brother. Abimelech ruled over Israel three years. And God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the leaders of Shechem, and the leaders of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the violence done to the seventy sons of Jerubel might come, and their blood be laid on Abimelech, their brother, who killed them, and on the men of Shechem, who strengthened his hand to kill his brothers. And the leaders of Shechem put men in ambush against him on the mountaintops, and they robbed all who passed by them along that way, and it was told to Abimelech. And Gaal, the son of Ebed, moved into Shechem with his relatives, and the leaders of Shechem put confidence in him. 
And they went out into the field and gathered the grapes from the vineyard and trod them and held a festival. And they went into the house of their God and ate and drank and reviled Abimelech. And Gael, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech? And who are we of Shechem that we should serve him? Is he not the son of Jerubbaal? And is not Zebul his officer? Serve the men of Hamar, the father of Shechem, but why should we serve him? Would that this people were under my hand, then I would remove Abimelech. I would say to Abimelech, increase your army and come out. When Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gael, the son of Ebed, his anger was kindled. And he sent messengers to Abimelech secretly, saying, Behold, Gael, the son of Ebed, and his relatives have come to Shechem, and they are stirring up the city against you. Now therefore go by night, you and the people who are with you, and set an ambush in the field. Then in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, rise early and rush upon the city. And when he and the people who are with him come out against you, you may do to them as your hand finds to do. So Abimelech and all the men who were with him rose up by night and set an ambush against Shechem in four companies. And Gael, the son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city. And Abimelech and the people who were with him rose from the ambush. And when Gael saw the people, he said to Zebul, Look, people are coming down from the mountaintops. And Zebul said to him, You mistake the shadow of the mountains for men. Gael spoke again and said, Look, people are coming down from the center of the land, and one company is coming from the direction of the diviner's oak. Then Zebul said to him, where is your mouth now, you who said, Who is Abimelech, that we should serve him? Are not these the people whom you despised? Go out now and fight with them. And Gael went out at the head of the leaders of Shechem and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many fell wounded up to the entrance of the gate. And Abimelech lived at Aramah, and Zebul drove out Gael and his relatives so that they could not dwell at Shechem. On the following day, the people went out into the field, and Abimelech was told, He took his people and divided them into three companies, and set an ambush in the fields. And he looked and saw the people coming out of the city, and so he rose against them and killed them. And Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood at the entrance of the gate of the city, while the two companies rushed upon all who were in the field, and killed them. And Abimelech fought against the city that day. He captured the city and killed the people who were in it, and he razed the city and sowed it with salt. When all the leaders of the tower of Shechem heard it, they entered their stronghold of the house of el Berith. Abimelech was told that all the leaders of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech went up to Mount Salmon, he and all the people who were, were, were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bundle of brushwood and took it up and laid it on his shoulder. And he said to the men who were with him, What you have seen me do, hurry and do as I have done. So every one of the people cut down his bundle and following Abimelech put it against the stronghold. And they set the stronghold on fire over them so that all the people of the Tower of Shechem also died, about a thousand men and women. Then Abimelech went to Thebes and encamped against Thebes and captured it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and all the men and women and all the leaders of the city fled to it and shut themselves in, and they went into the roof of the tower. And Abimelech came to the tower and fought against it and drew near to the door of the tower to burn it with fire. And a certain woman threw an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Then he called quickly to the young man, his armor bearer, and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me, lest they say of me a woman killed him. And his young man thrust him through and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, everyone departed to his home. Thus God returned the evil of Abimelech 
which he committed against his father in killing his seventy brothers. And God also made all the evil of the men of Shechem return on their heads, and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubal. Tola and Jair, chapter 10. After Abimelech, there arose to save Israel Tola, the son of Pua, son of Dodo, a man of Issachar. And he lived at Shamir in the hill country of Ephraim. And he judged Israel twenty-three years. Then he died and was buried at Shamir. After him rose Jair the Gileadite, who judged Israel twenty-two years. And he had thirty sons who rode on thirty donkeys, and they had thirty cities, called Havoth Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Caman. Further disobedience and oppression. The people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites, and the gods of the Philistines, and they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he sold him to the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the Ammonites. And they crushed and oppressed the people of Israel that year. For eighteen years they oppressed all the people of Israel who were beyond the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. And the Ammonites crossed the Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, for we have forsaken our God and have served the Baals. And the Lord said to the people of Israel, Did I not save you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, from the Ammonites, and from the Philistines, the Sidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Mayanites oppressed you? And you cried out to me, and I saved you out of their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore I will save you no more. Go and cry out to the gods whom you have chosen. Let them save you in the time of your distress. And the people of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems good to you. Only please deliver us this day. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord. And he became impatient over the misery of Israel. Then the Ammonites were called to arms, and they encamped in Gilead, and the people of Israel came together, and they encamped at Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said to one another, Who is the man who will begin to fight against the Ammonites? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And that concludes the reading in Judges. Mark 3, 20-35 Jesus has just called his disciples. Then he went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him, and he said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, unless he first binds that strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For, they were saying, 
he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him, and the, a crowd was sitting around him. And they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. That concludes the reading in Mark. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. To gain a wider audience for this series of videos, I ask a few favors of you. First, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can also click on a bell icon and that will make sure that you receive notifications when new videos come out. Then, if you have comments or questions, uh, even if they're critical, I want to hear from them. Be civil, of course. Uh, the YouTube algorithm rewards videos that receive audience participation. So, uh, I appreciate your input. You are a part of this channel as well. Thank you, and have a blessed day.